it has been quite some time since we've come out here to uh, Yukon Valley for a hunt, and I think other than the handgun hunt that we did when the handgun DLC released, it's probably been since before the reset, since we really went out here and explored this map. So I wanted to come into multiplayer because we have been on our single player map just a little bit and just kind of see what we can run into. And straight away, was that an albino or an egg white? It might be an albino. It's nearly 400 meters away because of the 45, which you just saw there, which I kind of have for charging wolves. The 7 mil is going to be our big game and medium game weapon. That was a perfect opportunity to slot in a almost 400 meter shot with the 7 mil. And I think we got it. What the heck? Now this is a bummer. It seems the bugged wolves are still a thing in multiplayer. So we may not run into any charging wolves to take out with the 45. That was kind of my purpose in bringing that. We'll have to find a way to use it. Also... I remember this from the handgun update. We were getting those like almost missing textures or something on the disturbed veg and it was turning that black color and I had completely forgotten about it. It must be Yukon specific, but that's really, really odd. Regardless, we also have the missing eye texture. So they have like the beady looking eyes that you can see from any angle. That is an albino though. And that is a 32.66 scoring level 3 albino, which is significant. It's significant because I think it's our biggest female albino wolf, should be better than our last, and therefore it's actually going to be a main lodge addition right off the bat. Have they redone their models or something? Maybe it's just a new harvest screen, but I mean, that looks incredible. The albino wolves look really, really good. I don't remember them looking that good, but it could, like I said, just be a matter of the new harvest screen. That is unbelievable. I mean, I was going to talk about why I chose multiplayer, and we'll do that as we go forward, but I think uh, it was the right decision anyway. But anyway, kind of as we go along here, I think one thing that might be kind of interesting is trying to take the bison with the 7 mil just because it's something that we're not typically going to do, and we only have it again because we grabbed the 45 today. That guy is at least broadside. I'm kind of surprised they spooked, but I guess the wind was bad, so standing there still was allowing them to detect us, even though we didn't move. And I think that's going to be a lung. It's just going to take some time for him to go down. You can see his health is dropping, but it is a slow process compared to something like the 300. And I... Do you think if I saw the estimate right, he has no chance of being a gold? He's a 130.8. Actually, gold's 148. European bison might be the one that's up 170 or 180. So technically a shot with the estimate, but a silver regardless. And man, like millimeters from heart shot him. That would have been pretty cool. Gotta say, if he just tipped over the moment we shot him, I would have been pretty pleased with that. But maybe we'll get a chance to do that still. Now. That certainly is not going to be very big either, but a chance to use the 243 pistol. And that was at least, I think that shot was too high, but that was at least a part of my decision making to come to this map. I love using this thing, and there's the chance to shoot Red Fox with it. And to me, it is species like Red Fox, like when it's the only small thing on a map, rather than carrying a full-size weapon like the 243 Ranger, the rifle, and using up a lot of your inventory space, Something like that handgun is just perfect for those types of situations. That was a bronze, in fact. We actually hit a lung. We hit both lungs. Somehow. No complaints, I guess we were zeroed for 50, but it's not like we've seen much bullet drop in the past from that. We have shot, during our Red Fox grind, two level 1 males, so... I assume I taxed those, I don't think that'll be a hollow shame or the one. They can get down into, like, the 2.5, 2.7 range, so... Could have been worse, I suppose. I find it kind of interesting that Yukon seems to be really the only map that kind of has some odd graphical issues. There's a really obvious kind of red hue to everything above the reddish colored grass. And maybe it's just what's happening when the snow is melting. I'm not sure. But you kind of get it over in here too. And it definitely was not a thing in the past. But we're going to go ahead and try to get this bull moose. This is actually an area where... In the past, it used to be really good. I remember getting, during that time period right after True Rack Moose came out, a lot of level 5 trolls. And then when Rancho released, 
there were a lot of areas on a lot of maps where suddenly it would be only males or only females of any given species, and this was one of those lakes. You'd really only get female moose here for a long time, and obviously, now we have a number of bulls, so that's pretty cool to see. As we kind of scoot around here, though, I did want to talk about why I chose multiplayer today. I mentioned that, and then we got caught up in Albino Wolf and all that, so before we get too far into this hunt, basically, this is a video that I'm prepping for my hunt in Tennessee, and usually I don't like to mention the fact that it's a prep video because I think it takes away from the hunt a little bit, but especially with a map like Yukon that we really haven't hunted that much in single player, I think maybe it would be a little bit of an odd decision to go to multiplayer, but it's that aspect of the unknown and having played a lot of Call of the Wild and a lot of all the hunting games recently as I prep these videos, it makes it a little more fun when you just have no idea what you're going to encounter. And again, no doubt it worked out with the albino wolf right off the bat, but that is essentially the reasoning we have had a lot of time in Call of the Wild in the last couple of days and sometimes multiplayer is just that little bit of a shakeup that you need. But anyway, pretty cool to have gotten a bull moose from that area. First time that we've done that in a while. Light brown fur type, not very big, obviously, at 155, but I think just a, hopefully a sign of things to come, getting to check that area out for future moose hunts. Speaking of places you really didn't get that many moose before, this spot you really wouldn't get much of either. You'd get the occasional, like, solo moose, but this is the Wolf's Head Lake, and right outside the outpost, there are, what, six moose here? The threes are darn near identical, so I guess we'll just take the one on the right. It's a little bit higher estimate. But it's these kind of things that I do think makes it interesting when the devs do things such as resets and redistributions. And I kind of wish they would do it, say, once every three months, once every six months, something like that. Because getting to re-explore the map and find things in places that you've never seen them before, I don't know why, but it makes it, at least to me, feel like you're hunting a brand new map, and that makes a heck of a lot of difference when it is only once every six months that a new map comes out. If you had, in between there every three months, a reset for every map, or at least a redistribution, you wouldn't even have to reset the population itself. I think it could really help with the replayability. Now this, I knew about, but I actually hadn't seen it for myself, so I guess that's pretty good evidence we have not touched the dead forest on Yukon since the Reventuli update, probably. Grizzly bear up in this area, and it's a cool spot to encounter bears. I don't even know if there's wolves up here anymore. Got a caribou walking through there. That actually is my plan for the 45. I want to try to take a caribou with it. Although, actually, I don't even know if that's ethical, but we'll probably just do it anyway. In the meantime, gonna be tough to get a bear with no ammo. So let's see if we can get along on him. And we'll attempt to kind of get in front of that caribou and, well, maybe just stock up to it. This may end up being one of those really bad ideas, but I think it actually could be a decent test of the 45's power because we've seen it perform really well on the species it's actually ethical for. But as we stock up there, the grizzly bear did die, so we must have gotten along. Our moose is down right here in front of us, which naturally is going to be a silver again. Just nice to get to see those new models. I can't wait to get a diamond with these new models. And quite honestly, we're going to be back here on Yukon probably a lot. I really like what's been done out here, and I can't believe it took us this long to get here, but maybe it will be a Yukon diamond, considering I definitely plan to be back here sooner rather than later. And so I think our approach is going to be just kind of go ahead and keep scooting closer till he notices us and stands up. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't already maybe we'll stand up because I don't want to crouch all the way into 20 meters I feel like that's not the best test how is he there we go finally got him to go alert sort of a decent shot angle and let's just kind of see how that does and in the meantime we can appreciate the reload animation for this 45 By far my favorite animation in the entire game at the moment, but we can take a look here. And that is Vital Blood, so it's going to take him down. I don't know for sure if it's going to take him down more quickly than the Grizzly Bear went down. It would have been standing, or sitting I guess, right down there somewhere to our right. I guess we'll track the caribou since we have the tracks to begin with. And 
maybe we'll stumble into the bear anyway. And I will say, he didn't go that far. Though, that was a especially lucky shot back of the lung, liver, and stomach. Naturally the wrong ammo, but he would have been a silver, so not a big deal. Quick kill at 12%? I mean, anything above zero I would be really impressed with. And I don't know, is lung, liver, stomach better than double lung? Maybe just a touch, but in theory you could do that semi-consistently with like a broadside shot. In the meantime, never saw any sign of the bear, so I guess it went a different way. And now I see the reason why he didn't really go anywhere. The initial shot would have been right down there, 50 meters away. Where do we hit him? Just straight up right long. Maybe he didn't run that fast. Quick kill for that was 46%. I mean, not bad. I'm actually pretty impressed, but we're going to go for a little jog through the dead forest. Probably get at least up into this area somewhere. And just kind of see what else we encounter for bears or caribou. And maybe we can run into something else cool out here, but... I think one thing we're probably not going to see is the wolves, and that's a very different deal. Not that albino grizzly bear were ever that hard to spot in the past. I mean, albino anything fairly large sticks out really well. But I mean, it would be so easy in this area to spot an albino bear resting. The difference is between here when they rest and when they were primarily down in the south and the east, there was live trees so you had a lot of leaves and branches and stuff to potentially block you from actually knowing they're there down here i mean you just you really can't miss it everything is wide open so i think that maybe could improve our odds of getting a gold albino grizzly that's another thing that i've wanted for a very long time we had that one double six that was like 0.2 off or something like that i don't know i think there would be a chance here and I don't know when grizzly bears drink now, I don't think it's the same 3 to 7 a.m. time it used to be. I'm assuming it's kind of linked up with the other bears, and it's somewhere around like 20 hundred hours to midnight or whatever the bears drink at now. It may still be worth it, I mean there's just not that many locations for them to drink. They might be just all packed in here. But this hunt, it really has gone from just an idea that we hadn't hunted this map much lately, to looking forward to a bunch of future hunts quite honestly it it really is as far as the redistributions go one of my absolute favorites that i've seen as far as species that not only species i like but species that i think are popular being in spots that are more fun to hunt i think and the way that things look now with the caribou with the Grizzly bear, and quite honestly, even with the gray wolves down in here. Now, that's going to be a single player thing because they're still bug in multiplayer. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to hunt this map going forward. And so, perhaps a last kill here in a level 4 moose. We haven't had a gold moose yet that I can recall. I do want to make sure there's nothing big on the other side. And when we go over there to claim him, we will be able to see that. He actually looks smaller than the level 3. The 3 is up to 227, but there's no shot angle in there anyway, so... Let's go ahead and try to get this guy, and we'll see what's over there if there are going to be any more bonus kills, but especially considering the fact that we got the albino wolf and are going to be headed back to the trophy lodge anyway, I think this will be a good spot to wrap up, and it kind of, in a way, leaves even more of Yukon to kind of explore. I know that I ran around down here a little bit when the reset happened, and we were in the Crimson Plain a good bit in the handgun video, naturally because we were looking for the gray wolves, but... Much of this west side, I think, still is going to be fun to explore, and I didn't even get up here to the north yet, so I'm looking forward to that. So no sign of anything big over here. A couple more moose, but no huge ones. This guy was a gold steel at 203, despite the level 3 looking a little bit bigger. Left long at 285. I actually think this is going to be up there as one of the better moose lakes. And they did drink here a little bit, I think, in the past, but not nearly to the degree that they seem to now, so... All that stuff is going to be fun to look forward to, and, you know, honestly, I think we're going to have to come back here in single player too, but I'm really glad we chose multiplayer today, just because of the albino wolf, and I think on that note, we'll go and take a look at it in the trophy lodge. And so, real quick, just before we take it down, this was the old albino, which was also a multiplayer kill, and funny enough, it 
was sort of the same bug, where it was actually standing still and we just shot it while it was standing there because we had finally found an albino. But it wasn't exactly the same thing. Not every wolf in multiplayer back then kind of got stuck, but they still seem to now. It is a bronze though, and the one we got today was a silver, so that will be a fairly significant improvement. So now we have the Melanista Gold Plains Bison that we actually dropped with the 10 gauge of all things, the Max Gore Diamond Wolf back there, and a silver albino female wolf to round out that multi-mount. We've got a representative of each fur type, common and all the rares for the gray wolves in this lodge, and I think we now have, for the females in those multi-mounts, at least a silver, for the males a gold or diamond. So pretty happy to have added that there. And again, I'm really looking forward to hunting Yukon more. I had no idea that that's what we were going to be wrapping this video up, kind of talking about just how good Yukon is, but I can't believe it's been this long and I didn't know that. I mean, we're into November and I'm only finally realizing Yukon is a map we need to spend more time on and I think before too long, we'll be back out there again checking it out. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.